Be heard. President Biden says he wants a clean bill, no debt ceiling bill with any strings attached. The House Republicans say they want spending cuts attached to their $1.5 trillion plan to reduce the debt. Douglas Holtz Aiken is the president of American Action Forum. Mr. Holtz Aiken, thanks for being with us. Um, Republicans and Democrats always seem to be at odds in spending on the budget, depending on who is in power. Do you think, are you optimistic that we could get a deal this time? Or do you think that both sides are so dug in that neither will budge? Well, we've seen both sides dug in before, um, most notably in 2011, when uh, ultimately they did budge, but it first took a fair amount of financial market volatility. Uh, we ultimately saw a downgrade in that episode. One hopes that they come to a deal quicker than that. I mean, the reality is, Dell, that there's no right way to raise the debt limit. We have done it clean um, many times. We have done it with policy writers just as many times. It's about 50-50. And so this is really about the need to get to yes in the House, the Senate, and at the White House simultaneously. We have yet to see anything that looks like a bipartisan bill that can pass the House and the Senate. So um, we, we hope that this meeting is a step toward that path. I'm going to ask a dumb question. Is this about the debt ceiling? Is this about spending cuts? Or is this about political points going into 2024? I think it's probably uh, about all three. Uh, I, I don't think anyone wants to default. Uh, everyone ultimately wants to raise the debt ceiling or suspend it, whichever uh, they choose. Uh, but there's a deep disagreement about the future of the federal budget and the, the amount and kind of spending that uh, the federal government will do. And that feeds right into the policy positions on the 2024 campaign. So, you know, you can be sure that the president would like to go into the 24 campaign saying, I defeated the Republicans on this debt ceiling. I did the right thing by the American public, saved the economy from being wrecked. Republicans would like to go in and say, you know, look, we got the president to agree to spending cuts. We, we stopped threatening the American public with overspending and debt, and, and we did the right thing. And so that's in there uh, every day. Um, I wanted to say to Nate that in Washington, both sides are usually hiding the truth somewhere in the middle of their arguments, but that would be editorial, so I won't do that. But that being the case, the Republican plan calls for a rollback to 2022. It sounds good on paper. What's wrong with that? Uh, at 2022 levels will be dramatically lower. I mean, there's no question we haven't seen discretionary spending go back uh, in that way. Uh, but that you know, fiscal 2022 is not that long ago. I mean, we're talking about something that was in September of last year. And so if you could live with it in September of last year, couldn't you live with it uh, uh, this year? That's the basic argument the Republicans have. It's just not something the federal government typically does. Uh, it usually raises discretionary spending, if only by uh, the amount of inflation. So uh, this isn't a right or wrong situation. This is what would I prefer? What would you prefer? Where can we meet in the middle to get a deal? And, you know, when I was director of the Congressional Budget Office, you saw this every year. This is negotiation over the annual appropriations, and it always looks like this. I almost said, Peshaw, it sounds like you're saying that this has happened before in Washington, but I wouldn't be that <laughs> cynical. I do have a question, though, on the issue of the Democratic plan, which basically says that they want to hold on to the COVID monies. Why is that such a non-starter for Democrats? Uh, the COVID money is uh, an important piece of uh, funding, especially for state and local governments. A lot of that money will end up in uh, Democratic congressional districts, um, uh, far more urbanized areas, and you know it, that money may not have been spent, but it is spoken for. They have plans for it, and they don't want to give it up. And that being said, if this is indeed about money that has already been spent, if there are budget cuts that are adopted, does that not mean that someone is going to get the shaft? It depends how these uh, cuts get, get done. I, it, it's easy for me to imagine that they would put in place caps on future appropriations, 2024, 25, 26, 27. We've done that before. Adhering to those caps is often hard, but there's no immediate uh, budget cut and no one sees an immediate yanking of their funding. The, the reality uh, for the, the American public is that they, they have put off limits most of the federal spending. You know, 70% of federal spending is entitlements. Uh, they have they have put that off limits. 
Another big chunk is now interest payments. They're, they're, they're trying desperately to honor the, the need to pay interest. So they're fighting about something that is a tiny fraction of the federal budget. Uh, even if there are some future cuts in the growth rate of that spending, it's not going to change the substance of our deficit and debt problem. That's going to await a, a different agreement on another day. So this is really more symbolic than, than genuinely fixing the federal budget problem. I think you probably did the best of explaining both sides of this argument than I've heard in a long time. Douglas Holtz Aiken, the president of American Action Forum. Mr. Holtz Aiken, thanks for being with us. Thank you.